folks, back to McGee here. You saw me scald these and slip the hide off. Now you're going to get to see how I cook them. We got a huge thing going at the church. It's going to be a Mother's Day deal, and the, the fathers basically were nominated to cook. And I don't think the women even nominated us. We kind of nominated ourselves. You can hear meat frying over there, which tells you this ain't all. This whole thing was completely filled. We're going to cook about three or four different ways. I don't know how many different ways I'm planning on cooking here, but I've got cream of mushroom soup by the jug here, and i got plenty of tangy bacon and zesty Catalina. So we're going to be just cooking some different ways. Let's see how this works out. Now I'm cooking some of this over just straight on fire, sliding it right in on that fire, just to get the taste of the fire in it. Now as you know, you might not know if you didn't watch the video, all this was cured in sugar cure. I don't have to salt any of this, it's plenty salty. We're just gonna get the fire rolling and we're gonna get the meat cooked. All right, I got shoulders. Here, here, here's a big old hind leg and a little hind leg. I'm gonna slide that in there. It don't fit. It don't fit. Maybe we'll get a little of it in there. There we go. I better get this out of here. Look here. Got some fire going down in here. Uh, that is actually doing great. It's not burning. The fire's in the back. Looking good. For those of you that know this channel well, you know we have a wood stove out here for the summertime and we got a wood stove in the house for in the wintertime and luckily enough today is a very cool day for May and believe it or not we got two fires going we got both stoves going that way I can get all this done if you ever try this be very cautious there ain't nothing to keep your meat just from burning up if you've got grease anything greasy is extremely flammable but I'm just keeping an eye on it every once in a while open it up and look I recently put out a video showing how to cut these little wild pigs up in a way to where you don't have to throw anything out. You can see those ribs right there. This is a shoulder, which is, it's a very tiny, like it's a little pig. But boy, does it ever work out good for this kind of cooking. Hey, Brian. Yeah. It's a cooking hot, son. You ain't getting it hot, but yeah. I can feel the heat. Somewhere. You can feel the heat, huh? Yeah, he did. That's how young we're out there. That thing is rolling. That's like the biggest fried chicken legs you've ever seen. <laughs> I'm going to stand them up like that for a while. Woo! That's good. They got me hustling back and forth right now. I got a pretty good flame under that meat now. I got to really watch it. All right, it's time to pull this one out. We'll put this in there. Pull this one out and put another one in. Look at that. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. That is beautiful. It caught fire a little bit. I'm going to put it right there. Let it rest a while. And I'm going to let this stove cool off a little bit. See, I just shut this bottom door down here. Push this right here. And that'll choke that flame off a little bit. All right, going to roll these bad boys again. Oh, they're keeping me rolling in here. Yeah, buddy. I have to keep a hustle when you do this way, boy. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Move it, move it, move it. All right, we got that cooled off. I'm gonna go get another shoulder. All right, here we are. Big old nice shoulder. Look at that. Sugar cured that baby. The way I slipped this hide off was the scalding method. There's no, no loss of fat. That's very important. I'm gonna put her fat down first. And in just a minute we'll turn her over. Now if you're thinking there's no way you can get a leg that thick done on the top cooking it in thin oil, you're exactly right. You might could, but it wouldn't be fun. This is just the beginning. This is going to get the process started. Then we're going to take over from there and let the other process finish it up. All right, it's time to get this. Whoa, be careful with the firewood there, son. You're going to hit my cameraman. Time to flip this bad boy. All right. Got him flipped. Now out here in the summer kitchen, I've got this fire 
regulate it a little carefully because I don't want to burn up the meat that's in the firebox. That means this meat is cooking a little slower. That means I need this bad boy to just lay right on there like this. Now that is gonna do the job that I need done. And it's getting a little froggy in there. Getting a little hot. All I had to do is pop that like that and that take care of it. You might say, McGee, you're crazy cooking without, you don't know what the temperature is. You don't know, you ain't got no way to control nothing. You're right and I like it. It's a disaster waiting to happen. Bring it. Hmm. Yes, sir. Ready to come out. Yes, sir, baby. Look at that grease dripping. Yes, sir. Check on these real quick in the house. They looking good. These are all hind quarters. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Keep it cooking. Just keep it cooking, boys and girls. All right. Getting the last one out here. That makes eight shoulders. Ah, we're going to take this joker out. Ah. It's hot, hotter than a $3 pistol. Now we got this where we can throw our big wood in and shut this thing down. I've got 16 legs and shoulders that I'm doing up for the Mother's Day at the church. Eight of them are shoulders that I put in the fire to make a grilled flavor, just a straight up grilled pork. Now the way we're gonna finish them out, we're gonna take aluminum foil and we're gonna wrap them up and get them back in to the oven. So I'm just gonna take my shoulder like this and I'm gonna wrap him up. It's just a very simple, simple thing. You can do it different ways, but I think I'll do it like this. There's only one no-no, and that is do not poke holes in your oil. And I'm gonna put them in these pans right here that will just slide right in my oven. All right, I have got my oven on exactly 300 degrees. We're gonna slide these bad boys eight count them one two three four five six seven eight there goes four and here's four will this one fit that's a good question well this little one right here i may have to figure out something else let's see if he'll go right here sure enough there we go now i'm just going to try to keep this on 300 and then throughout the night as it goes the fire's going to burn out or whatever. It's going to slowly go down. By morning, I'm hoping it'll be on about 200 or a slightly less. Because these are small pieces, but they are piled in there pretty thick. So I need my heat to stay up. But by morning, if they're still not done, not a problem. Because this meal is not until 5.30 tomorrow night. So I've got time. That's very important for the old heart to know you've got time. <laughs> All right, here's our fried legs. This is four of them. The other four are outside cooking in the other stove a little slower than the one in here was. So I'm gonna let them keep cooking. And I'm gonna start the next process on these. This is a ham, this is a hind leg. It's not gonna be done in the middle, I'll just tell you right now. It's not intended to be done in the middle. I see raw juice coming out. Right now, here's what I want to do right now at this stage of the game. Right now, while it's still able to be sliced and not just fall apart, I don't want it to tear like this is not pulled pork. That's not what I'm intending to make here. But it's in the absolute perfect condition for what I'm wanting. So it's going to be pink in the middle still. Here's, here we go. Here's what I want. That is his tail. That's literally the tail of the piglet. They were wild, not tame. So many people tell me, oh, it ain't worth the time to fool with them little ones. And I tell them, oh, but it is. Whether they want to believe me or not, it's up to them. And we're gonna just cut up through the bone 
like that and fillet right around this bone, cutting these slices off that I just sliced. Now look at that. We're just wanting to make slices, pieces. They don't all have to be the same thickness, but uniform would be nice. Look at that, beautiful. If, <laughs> if you were eating beef or deer, that is where you'd want it right there. But not for wild pig. You want to cook it well done. And according to the chart that I have, you can eat it safe. You can safely eat it medium rare. But it's got to be kept at that temperature for a certain period of time. And I've got the chart. I'll just pop the chart up right here if you want to see. If you want to eat a medium rare pig safe, this is how to do it. But that's not how we're doing it here. You know, the last person to want medium rare meat is going to be a mother. And this is for Mother's Day. So we're going mother style on this. I'm using my Victorinox knife that Longbow Banjo gave me. What a sweet personality. He's a YouTuber. Bless his heart. He knew when he gave me the knife, he was going to get shouted out about 10 million times. He ain't no dummy. I'll just tell you. Just put it that way, he ain't nobody's dummy. This shank meat's even fairly tender here. Let's get this thing on the road. So for this recipe, we're gonna quickly just throw in a can of cream and mushroom soup. We're just going to spread that out here, just, just roughly. Now, we're going to take this juicy, fresh pork, and we're just going to layer it in there, like this right here. We're going to put it all in, in this one layer. I'm telling you, it looks so good. I can hardly not eat it. Here's some that's fully cooked. I'm going to eat it right now. Mmm. My. Mmm. 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 If it's even half that good in this dish, I will be happy. Mmm. So tender. Over top of this meat, we are just going to do it again. Just pour the whole thing out and hope for the best. Just going to spread it over all this tender, juicy, succulent pork. You just can't believe how good wild pork is if you get them little young piglets like this. Mm. The video that I put out about how I skint these things with the hot water has really taken off. I mean, it is really doing good. Lots of people learning a new way to skin wild pigs. I have made my cake, and now it's time to bake. So what I'm gonna do is throw this in the oven. It's This needs to bake, bake for probably an hour on 350, and it's gonna be good as gold. So I say let's get it in the oven and start baking it now. Check out. What I'm doing with them hog bones. Got them frying back in that same skillet. There's more meat on them bones. We're gonna fry them babies up. Ooh, it's a little bit warm, but not bad. Right, here's the one that was outside cooking. I got a feeling we're about to see something beautiful. When the steam clears away, look at that. Mm, I got two shoulders and two hams in here. This is going to be a little too hot to handle right away. I am going to have to give it a little time. It's, oh, did you see the juice spray out of that when I poked that? Ay, yeah, yeah, folks. As you know, we've got the ribs on here with the way that I cut these pigs. We're just going to come in here. We're going to remove these ribs. 
Oh, 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 oh. Yes, very nice. Just gonna lay them there. Now we've got the copa mussel right there. And we're just gonna lay off this meat. I can't resist this. Mmm. Way too good. All right, we are ready for recipe number three. I reckon if you count the, the shoulders that we're cooking in the fire are basically seasoned with fire and smoke, so that's one. The cream and mushroom soup, two. And this here is gonna be seasoned with Zesty Catalina and Tangy Bacon Catalina. So, first thing I'm gonna do is put a layer of meat down, which I will do here. Now we're gonna start out with the Tangy Bacon. The big question is, can I get this off with greasy fingers? <clears throat> the answer is no. There we go, <laughs> all right. Now, just gonna sprinkle that over here ever so gently. That's enough of that. Now we're gonna take the rest of this meat and we're gonna put that over top of this. What's a good thing I nibbled on some of it or it wouldn't have all fit. All right, that's what you call perks of being the cook. Now, got my hands all greasy again for the zesty Catalina. That tastes nice and tangy. And that's what I'm going for on this recipe is tangy and good. Woo! That is going to be one kind of good eating. I know I've never done it before, but I just know. I know, I know, it's gonna be good. Let's throw this thing in the oven. We're just gonna slow bake this thing and we'll see how it is. All right, we're gonna throw this one in. It's pretty hot. Hit me right square in the face. Let's see what this one looks like. Oh, baby. All righty then. This obviously is chicken mushroom. This is the Catalina with the zesty Catalina and the tangy bacon Catalina. That looks unbelievable. I ain't got a fork. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna try some of this. Wow, -hoo -hoo -hoo. pork, baby. Wild pork steam just coming off of it. Mmm, there is gonna be some happy people tomorrow. I just pulled this out of the oven. It's gotta cool down. I've got to slide a lid on them, and i got to get them chilled on ice all night. Then tomorrow, I'll rebake them, get them back up to temperature, take them on over there, have a good meal. All right, it is the next day. Everything you see right here, shoulders that cooked all night long on very low heat in the wood cook stove. As you saw, where I slid them in there, I'm going to open them all up, and I'm going to debone them all. Now, and as I debone them, I'm going to pull them. That's what pulled pork is all about. It's having that meat deboned. I want you to see how easy this pulls free. So there's no doubt this is completely cooked. The bones are falling apart. And yet, at the same time, the meat is a beautiful pink color. That is not raw meat, that is cured meat. When you cure meat, for some, some reason, some way, somehow, it causes the meat to stay pink or turn pink. Look here how these ribs just pull right out. To me, there's nothing more beautiful than meat that was cured with that pink look. Pull this part off, we want only the best only the best. 
Do you know why we want only the best? Because my preacher's going to watch this video and he's going to see what he ate tonight here in about a week. So I don't want him to have second thoughts about that. That is just, that is some beautiful meat right there. The thing about pulled pork is different than shredded. We're not going to cut across the fibers. We're going to let them run long ways. But we're going to pull it. And boy, oh boy, oh boy. That's beautiful. And it's got that fire flavor in it. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask for some helpers and we're going to taste it and see if we need to add anything to it before we throw it in the pan. Do it, does it need some seasonings? That's what I'm going to get. So I'm going to get some taste testers here right quick. We're going to formulate a plan of action. Hey, boys! Hey, boys! Guarantee you they hear me. I see Caleb running up from the pond. Come here, Caleb! So we have this foil. We're just going to throw our bones in there. Caleb, I need some help, son. Matt, I need some help, son. Okay. Where's David and Joel? We've got to taste this meat and see if we need to add something to it. Uh, Joel? We need to taste this meat and see if we need to add something to it. Okay. Reach and get you some of that, boys. No, it's not bad, and it's not bad to boys that just ate a bunch of pizza. You know it ain't bad. Now, what is it taste? Can you taste where it got cured with that sugar cure? Mm. Or does it just taste like meat? It's like meat, kind of. We only sugar cured it for a couple hours, so it didn't actually cure it. It just got the curing process started around the outside. Okay, I tell you what we'll do. I've got my camp dog hat on. I'm gonna put some camp dog on some of it and we'll see if we like it that way. All right, I've got the mild blend. I don't, this is gonna be for everybody at church. I don't wanna overpower anybody if they don't like hot. Brand new. Uh, let's uh, get us some specimens down here to try out. I'm gonna sprinkle it on. And we're just gonna kind of roll it around, pull it. All right, try that. I don't know if I put enough on it. Let me doctor some more up for you and lay it to it. Okay, now this camp dog is a low sodium, so even though it's cured, it's not gonna hurt it none. All right, try this, boys. Now, this is a little heavier season than what it will be in the pan if we do it. Is that what we're looking for? Or do we need to try something else? I think it's good. Like that. Yeah. All right. I think Camp Dog wins out, folks. So I think we're going to try that. I've got to finish pulling the pork off of seven more shoulders. This is just one of them. Once I get that done, I'm going to lay it all out here. And coat it all down in camp dog then we'll mix it up put it in the pans and we'll get ready to go to the mother's day dinner all right we're just going to pull this meat boy is that not beautiful absolutely gorgeous meat i'm just going to spread it out so that I can get my camp dog in it and then I'll mix it back up and we got to reheat this because it's been on ice for about 12 hours all right I got my hands all cleaned up I had a video where a guy he didn't think I ever washed my hands in the video oh boy if I showed you every time I washed my hands you wouldn't watch my videos no more all right we're just putting camp dog all over this
Now, you people that go to my church that don't want to order camp dog, now you're going to know what it tastes like. Now you're going to probably get online and order it. <laughs> of course, all you got to do is go to my link that I've got in the description of this video and just go to that link, use the promo code McGee to get 20% 20 20 off. All right, I got it in this big serving pan that my neighbor gave me. Now, I'm just gonna cover it over with foil. I always put the shiny side towards the meat. All right, just pulled this out of the oven and it is bubbly, bubbly hot. We got a pretty good little ways to drive. So I'm gonna quickly pop this in here. We're gonna get it in the van, cover it up really good so that it'll stay hot till we get there. And that's just in a few minutes you're gonna see us at the park. Let's go. All right, we made it. Is it still hot, Joel? Good. Looks like somebody's up there cooking already. Is it a secret what the meat is? It's not a secret, but maybe we shouldn't tell. Oh boy, am I going to be on your YouTube channel? You want to be? Sure. <laughs> where, where you got going, Brother Jake? I got some chicken going. Wow. That's what they call the gospel bird. I don't know if it is or not. Pastor's cooking it. It's got to be good. <laughs> well, I see you didn't quit moving, Michael. Well, that looks good. No, I did not quit moving. Chicken with his head chopped off. I said, well, as long as you don't quit moving, that's when the chicken's really wolf. <laughs> <laughs> you want to pull some meat off? That looks like something you should try. All right. I can eat this part. All right, go for it. I, I like bone meat. Wow. Yeah. It's done all the way through. Of course, this isn't a really This is a bone. small piece. Yeah. That's what I picked the smaller one, but I think we got a few minutes yet. Yeah, absolutely. That's perfect. What's it marinated in? It was uh, vinegar, melted butter, mm. garlic salt, um, a lot of oil, uh, olive oil, I think we used. No, coconut oil. Mm -hmm. Coconut oil. We made a marinade, and it sat in there, what, two days? We did Friday afternoon. I can taste it through and through. It is perfect. It's hard to stop eating that. Wow. That's why they call it the gospel bird. Mm. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. See the other side. Yeah. I like that outfit a lot. It's very simple, but extremely. I mean, you could do a small pig with that. Well, actually, that's the only thickness I can do. Oh, okay. Well, if you, if you made a, one of these. I've got a different cooker from the pig. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah, we'll, like take, it. we'll take it off in a few minutes. Okay. Sure is awful nice for these fine men to cook for their women, ain't it, on Mother's Day? Well, if you got a good woman, it's worth it. It is worth it. It is worth it. And, you know, if you weren't married and you wanted a good woman, it might help there, too. <laughs> yeah, it might. It might. <laughs> Just a little hint for the guys that ain't married yeah, yet. You know, yeah, help them out a little. Uh, they, it don't hurt to learn how to cook. Yeah. Preacher's got Joel working. That's good. Don't stand in that smoke, Joel. Somebody want to eat you. <laughs> <laughs> it is a nice, nice rig right there. And now David's been caught. Oh boy. Ain't that pretty. David are gonna load you down with chicken so fast you won't know what hit you, son. That was quick, wasn't it, David? I'm starting to think we might have enough. Hello, sir, how are you? Did you cook for your mom today? Ah, uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I 
exactly. What you coming on in here, boys? <laughs> Mission here, and that is to uh, celebrate all the mothers. Supposedly the men are making the food. I, I wasn't involved with that, so I can't say a whole lot. So I told Ned not help him clean up. So, so uh, yeah, I'm excited about getting together and just uh, having this time where we can uh, express appreciation to our mothers. And we just want to thank you all for for all the service you have done to your family. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for how good you are to all of us. And Lord, I just thank you on behalf of the mothers here that you've been good to each one of them. We also thank you for them, Father, and we just pray, Lord, that you will bless them in this coming year to find your grace sufficient for every need and for every challenge, every responsibility. Lord, just thank you for all that they do all the time. And we pray that you will truly just anoint them with your Holy Spirit and bless them, keep them. Bless this food to our bodies tonight and help us to truly be a thankful people. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm, this is what I got. Ham, chicken, and all the pork. This guy's got chicken. That guy got chicken. That guy got chicken and ham. That guy got chicken. Chicken. You got a little pork, didn't you? I've got to do a little interview with my friend here. What's your name? Josiah. Josiah. Now, I see you got a little pork there on your plate, sir. Oh, Is it good? You like it? Hmm. I did bring it. Yep, you figured. You figured it right. Sir, what's your name? I'm Levi. Uh, you're Levi. And I see you got some pork, actually, too. You had it hidden there, and I didn't notice it. Yeah. Is it okay? It's real good. Do you like it? You've got the sun in my favor. <laughs> it's right in your eyes. <laughs> well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, sir. Uh, what do you say, bubs? <laughs> Doing all right tonight. Oh, a little taste test. I didn't make them, but they were good. <laughs> hey, Tim. Did you make them potatoes? I did. Oh, yes, they're good. Yeah, they're so good. I made 15 pounds of them. Wow. 45 pounds of 45 pounds. 45 pounds of potatoes. You did good. Mm. That's good. I mean, if you would have cooked it, I'd still say it was good. <laughs> Hmm. I don't know what to say. You don't know what to say? I don't know what to say. Well, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> this guy is Jared Brubaker's brother. Jared Brubaker was at my farm, took the whole tour, made a big video of it. He kind of made me famous, you know, and I appreciated it. And this fella right here is his brother. So, you know, even if he don't know what to say, it still runs in his blood. It's really in there. He can say it just when it comes out. Hey, Manuel. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Are we going to go get dessert? Yeah. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Man, this guy knows how to do ice cream. Was he raised up in the ice cream shop, son? <laughs> oh, my. Well, it went off with a absolute blast. Nobody that ate the meat said it was bad. And I had some really good comments. As you can see behind me, still playing ball. There might be somebody actually eating a little bit. We're going to get on out of here. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.